All right. So before we go into the clinical features, we'll have a quick poll. This is the second poll, uh, which is the first symptom or sign to develop in DHS in your practice? Is it fever, rash, lymphadenopathy, or is it internal organ involvement? So we'll take the poll question now, and then we will discuss it later in the question and answer session. All right, so we have the poll results. So moving on. Uh, the clinical features, once the drug is taken, there's a reaction time, as I said, of about one to eight weeks, following which usually most of the time it is fever, which is the first symptoms. And then in, in a day or two, a uh, patient tends to develop the rash and subsequently lymphadenopathy and pharyngitis. In about a week to one month, there is internal organ involvement. And in about 9% of these patients who develop the rash, they go in for erythroderma or exfoliative dermatitis or Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. So this is one of our patients. This is the characteristic presentation, uh, a generalized rash which is exfoliating at many places. And one cannot appreciate the erythema because of the dark skin. Otherwise, there is definite mucosal involvement with uh, you know, kind of ulceration on the lips. There's a definite periorbital edema. And this patient definitely has icterus, which suggests that the patient has uh, a liver involvement. Uh, this periorbital and facial edema is a telltale sign for drug hypersensitivity syndrome, which is usually not seen with the other scar. And this patient was given leflunamide for rheumatoid arthritis. Problem with some of these drugs like leflunamide is uh, they undergo something called uh, uh, intrahepatic circulation, wherein the drug is repeatedly released after the metabolism. And this will continue till the drug is completely eliminated from the body. So this is a problem with some of the drugs like leflunamide. Uh, to differentiate, uh, on the left side, we have a picture of uh, multiple pustules, which are seen on an erythematous base. This is acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis. And on the right, we have a patient who has toxic epidermolysis with spots. So you can see the mucosal involvement with multiple necrotic uh, skin lesions. And these are the TN with spots. So these are the differential diagnosis which one has to keep in mind. The severity of these cutaneous lesions, they do not necessarily reflect severity of internal involvement. There's a paradoxical worsening on withdrawal of drug unlike other drug reactions. Uh, Generally, it is a maculopapular erythematous rash, which begins on the face and then may progress to erythroderma in about 9% of the cases. Periorbital and facial edema is a sign of systemic and potentially severe reaction. Generalized postulosis, which is seen in AGP as well. Uh, as against AGP, here it is mainly follicular and it is not limited to flexures alone. 
uh, in extreme rare conditions, this can the the DHS can progress to angioedema, can overlap and progress to Steven Johnson syndrome, or even toxic epidermal necrolysis with or without mucosal involvement. Coming to the internal organ involvement, in most of the cases, in about 50 to almost 100 percent liver is involved, kidney in about 10 to 50 percent, and the third more common, most common organ to be involved is the lungs. Now, apart from this, the muscle, the cardia, the pancreas, the spleen, thyroid, and CNS can also be involved. Uh, there are certain drugs which uh, have uh, more propensity to involve certain internal organs. For example, dapsone and antiepileptics cause more of liver injury. Allopurinol causes more of uh, renal injury. Minocycline has a predilection for heart. Uh, so these are the few drugs which have uh, kind of uh, uh, high risk uh, for internal organ involvement. Uh, in the liver, uh, it could be a mild elevation in the uh, transaminases to fulminant jaundice and severe hepatitis with a mortality rate increasing to 12 to 50 percent. So if there is a, a two times increase of ALT or direct bilirubin uh, twice on successive, successive dates or AST total bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase all of them increase more than two times the upper limit of normal once will count as a liver injury. Uh, kidneys, if there is a creatinine value more than 1.5 times the patient's baseline on at least two successive dates or a proteinuria of more than one gram per day with or without hematuria, or a decreased creatinine clearance, or a decreased glomerular filtration rate. Uh, this points towards a renal injury. Uh, for the lungs, if there's an evidence of interstitial lung disease on CT or X-ray, or an abnormal bronchiolular lavage, or a biopsy specimen, or uh, abnormal blood gases would point towards a lung involvement. For the heart, or the muscle, a CPK value of more than two times or a raised CPK uh, depending on heart or uh, muscle uh, or a raised troponin T or an abnormal imaging including chest X-ray, echocardiogram, electrocardiogram, electromyogram, CT or MRI would point towards muscle or heart involve, involvement. So coming to lab investigations, many times we see leukocytosis, which can go up to 50,000 cells per millimeter cube, almost like a leukomoid reaction. There could be eosinophilia, which could touch 20,000 cells per cubic millimeters. And this atypical lymphocytosis, this is something uh, very uh, abnormal in these patients. Normally, about 12% or less of the mononuclear cells are atypical lymphocytes, this is considered normal. One would consider it a probable atypical lymphocytosis if the count goes to 13 to 19% and a definite one when it is more than or equal to 20% of the mononuclear cells. Uh, atypical lymphocytosis is definitely suggestive of an internal organ damage and this is a poor prognostic indicator. Uh, the higher the eosinophil count, the greater the severity, especially endothelial damage. Uh, one would also want to do LFT, RFT, uh, renal function, and thyroid function, including anti-TPO for the prognostication. Chest X-ray, ultrasound cultures, uh, HIV, ANA, viral markers, and fever workup to rule out other causes of fever would also be required as per the case. A skin biopsy would show minimum keratinocyte necrosis as against TN or SJS, and hence it is not very useful in making a diagnosis. 
uh, a dress with skin very severe skin involvement would show cd8 positive and granzyme positive b lymphocytes and rt pcr of hhv6 in the mononuclear cells is a diagnostic of active infection unfortunately not many centers have this facility uh, estimation of the serum immunoglobulins would show a marked decrease in igg iga and igm in the early phase and the decrease in igg is an early sign of dhs pa to to in a carbamazepine uh, would require a 1 to 10% in petrol atom uh, again the patch test positivity is variable with the drug it is quite high with aromatic epileptic uh, anti epileptic drugs and beta lactams and is poor with allopurinol now there are two very specific tests which uh, are done in dhs again not done in most of the centers that's a lymphocyte toxicity assay which is for those who have not been exposed to the drug and the close family members uh, who would want to receive these drugs so the whole concept here is that the drug causes uh, the uh, impaired metabolism causes accumulation of reactive toxic metabolites which are toxic to the lymphocytes uh, so so uh, if the lymphocytes which are isolated from the blood samples of these dhs patients are exposed to these drugs and incubated uh, they can cause a cytotoxic effect on the lymphocytes which Uh, able to uh, eligible to numbers the other test is the lymphocyte transformation test this is for confirmation once the patient is already sensitized to the drug if one needs to confirm if it is uh, the particular drug which has caused it this test would be more useful and mind you both these tests are in vitro tests so there is no danger to the patient patient test measures the proliferation of t cells to a particular drug in sensitized individual and this test can be seen positive in about 5 to 8 weeks and it can remain positive even during the recovery stage uh, this also is seen in steven johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal lysis but over a period of time the test tends to fade so this is one good test uh, to do uh for uh drug hypersensitivity syndrome even in the recovery stage this has a specificity of 85% so quite uh, quite a good value 